Hey team, and welcome to another video in our Astrological Magical Elections video series. Today we are going to talk about the magical electional opportunities that are going to be available to us between our Virgo full moon on the 18th of March until our Aries new moon on April 1st. And of course, since we're going from a full moon to a new moon, we're working with the waning moon phase, which can present some unique challenges as typically when we want to work um, within a magical context, we typically find what we're trying to do more easily aligned to waxing moon values, um, which are more about growth, gain, augmentation, and development. Waning moon is the other side of that coin where we're now giving away, we're reducing, we're diminishing. And that is an important part of life that we all probably need to pay a little bit more respect to, but it can make it a little bit more difficult to um, realize the goals that we have since many of us are more growth oriented individuals, um, but we all go through periods in our lives where releasing things, letting things go and creating room for new things to develop is actually the best way to go. So if you're in one of those um, situations right now, hopefully something from this list of elections can help you out. So we're actually gonna start with the Australian continent today um, before moving into Western Europe and then North America. Um, but our first election for um, the Australian continent is going to be on, let's see, March 20th at around 4.15 in the morning. Um, and this is going to be an election for a Saturn planetary talisman. So finding this election was actually a little bit of a surprise for me because I didn't anticipate as having another planetary or another Saturn planetary talisman um, until closer to November, until after the retrograde period for Saturn ended. I didn't think we would have a good connect, a good, a good like combination that really accentuated Saturn well. Um, until then, but you know, looking through this, I found this really nice Saturn election, and so now here it is for you guys. Um, but of course, as we're always looking for these, um, Saturn is on the ascendant here, very well placed in his sign of Aquarius. Um, it's Saturn's day before it is before sunrise on a Sunday, so it's still Saturn's day since planetary days are determined by um, the time between sunrise to sunrise, and at the same time, we have the moon applying a very nice trine. Um, to Saturn from his exaltation of Libra, so so a really nice, a really nice connection through a really nice um, aspect, but also through a sign that Saturn enjoys. So we have a lot of really good stuff um, in this election. The ruler of the first house is Saturn itself. We're not worried about Saturn afflicting Saturn. Um, Mars is not able to afflict Saturn from this distance. Saturn does not combust the sun. Saturn's not stationing. Um, all in all, it's a really healthy, really good Saturn. Um, talisman a good Saturn election to work with oh I forgot to introduce my co-host today so my co-host today is Blossom um who does not appear very often but here she is in all her glory Blossom yes yeah, say hi I guess that's Blossom for hi as she tries to find a way to get comfortable so our second election for the Australian continent is going to be for March 23rd at just after 10.30 at night. This chart is set for um, 2232. And this is going to be an opportunity for a 20th Lunar Mansion Talisman. Now the 20th Lunar Mansion is a little bit different um, in that it is primarily utilized for like hunting. is kind of its traditional application. This of course means that it can actually be very useful for people who hunt. But, excuse me, uh, but it's also useful for individuals who are searching for something. Um, the idea is that this mansion is able to help a hunter kind of catch their quarry. Um, but there are many things in life that we can hunt, that we can look for. We can, you know, hunt for relationships, we can hunt for jobs, um, those kinds of things. Um, and so most of the time I recommend the 20th Lunar Mansion because I feel it's very strongly a kind of like a goal uh, attaining talisman. The idea of, you know, you have this thing that you want and you just kind of go out and get it. The 20th Lunar Mansion is very helpful for that. Um, so it's always really nice when we have a good election for the 20th Lunar Mansion come up. Of course, this is during the waning phase of the moon, so we have to take that into consideration when we're planning this talisman. That means that this talisman's efficacy to hunt or to gather or to gain, you know, to gain things, uh, goals that are more gain oriented, are going to be impeded during this talisman. And this is going to be a much better talisman um, 
for goals that are more involved around losing something, for getting rid of something, for moving away from something. So there's this like, there's this very, you have to take the moon phase into consideration for this one. It's a waning moon phase, so we need to let go. If you have a goal to let go of something, whether that's like break a bad habit, um, quit something, um, anything like that, then this would be a good talisman um, to make for that. It's very moving past, moving beyond and letting go. Um, and so sort of like the build up for that process and being able to actually attain it. So just kind of keep that in mind um, if you were planning or thinking about if this talisman started to sound good to you um, because you're like, oh, well, you know, I could really use a new job. Um, then this man, this election probably isn't going to be super helpful for that just because of the waning energies involved. But if you're looking for a talisman to help you like leave behind something, then this could be exactly what you need. So taking a look at our election, we have the moon placed here in the first house um, on the Ascendant and in the 20th Lunar Mansion. And at this time, she's applying this sextile to uh, Mars down here in Aquarius. Um, and so, you know, when we're talking about malefic planets, um, they're, they're very good for ta they're very good for waning moon talismans because malefic planets tend to have that separating, that letting go, that denying energy to them. Um, so I tend to recommend the utilization of malefic planets um, more often when it comes to waning moon talismans than I would for, of course, waxing moon talismans because ma malefic planets don't want to gain and give things. Um, so this is sort of like the utilization of malefic planets for a positive purpose, ultimately, even though in the short term it is a negative, the letting go of something. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind working forward with it. Um, as always, my, my normal kind of thing about um, malefics are going to malefic, benefics are going to benefic. And what that means is that even though we're utilizing the powers of Mars in a more positive way, um, there is going to be a Marsness to it. There is going to be like an aggressiveness to it, a burning a bridge to it, um, which might be very helpful. Um, that might be exactly what you need. But other people might find that energy a little bit too aggressive for what they were looking for, and that's fine too. Just something to keep in mind and weigh kind of based on your own situation and your own preferences. Our third and final election opportunity for the Australian continent is going to be on March 26th at just after, or just before midnight 30. Um, and this chart is set for uh, 27 minutes after midnight. And this is an opportunity for a 22nd Lunar Mansion. The 22nd Lunar Mansion is one that is primarily associated with escape, with fleeing. Um, there are other, you know, associations with it too, but the main idea seems to be that of escaping something. So in this way, it's very similar to the 20th Mansion, I think. And that the goal of the 20th mansion is, you know, to a set to set a goal to accomplish a goal in this waning phase to accomplish a goal for getting rid of something. Um, the 22nd lunar mansion is more about escaping something, more about like a finding freedom or gaining freedom um, and leaving behind things that held you back, um, essentially. So we're kind of having like two talismans in this in this time period, which have very similar um, powers or effects. So keep that in mind. Maybe there's one that you prefer more. Uh, maybe you're not able to make the time for one of them. Um, they're, they're both tend to work as very good. Um, um, what's my word that I'm looking for? Substitutes for one another. They, they can kind of sub in for one another in this context very well. Um, so a lot of times the 22nd mansion is utilized for individuals who feel uh, like they have something that's holding them back. They have some, whether that's like another person, um, some kind of situation, uh, a job, but the 22nd mansion also has healing capabilities as well, um, which is something that the 20th lunar mansion doesn't quite sync up with. So I think this would be like my one kind of caveat within this context of why you might pick one or the other. Um, if it's uh, a health issue that you want assistance with, then the 22nd lunar mansion is probably going to be better equipped to handle that than the 20th lunar mansion. So maybe prioritize that one a little bit more. Um, but the 22nd lunar mansion because it has these kind of like escape vibes and freedom vibes, um, it's more the focus on like the, this, the escape from pain, the freedom from illness. Um, so the 22nd Lunar Mansion is better if you are currently undergoing a health issue. It's not a very good preventative health talisman. Just something to keep in mind with that. If you are, if you are sick, if you are struggling with a health condition, 22nd Lunar Mansion can help you out. If you are not, if you just want a talisman that's more for preventive health, the 22nd Lunar Mansion probably is not going to be the best for that. Can it do the job? Sure, but there's another. there are other mansions that are better equipped to handle that, specifically from a preventative health standpoint. So taking a look at our election, the moon is here in the 22nd Lunar Mansion, conjoined the Ascendant, and at this time she is applying the sextile to um, Jupiter in Pisces, 
in the fourth house. The ruler of the first house is Saturn. Um, down here in the third house can join Venus, I guess we could say, a little bit far still from the Mars conjunction, which is good, um, but we'll kind of slowly start to lose Saturn as a planet that we can utilize uh, as this conjunction with Mars gets closer because we don't want that uh, to happen. Um, so all in all, the moon is well-placed and unafflicted. The ruler of the first house is unafflicted. The ascendant is unafflicted. I guess the only kind of real affliction that you could say is um, the moon and ascendant square the sun, but I don't really think that's a big deal. The sun squares aren't that big of an issue. Um, but other than that, the, the election just looks pretty, pretty, pretty good, pretty normal. Um, the application to benefit planet is always very helpful, um, especially if we're talking more about um, escape into like a safety net or, you know, freedom of pain into health. Um, this is something that we would want Jupiter's help more for than like a malefic planet, um, which would have its own kind of uh, healing modality, which might not be super, it would be more stressful for the body. So usually these applications to benefit, this is kind of goes back to my whole like benefic's gonna benefic, malefic's gonna malefic thing that I just talked about. Um, but yeah, you kind of want to choose what flavor of a letting go talisman you want. And when it comes to discussions about like health um, or safety, I usually always kind of defer to benefit planets for that. So I recommend that you do the same. So those were all the electional opportunities for the Australian continent. Now we're going to move into the Western European continent uh, and North Africa and talk about their electional opportunities for this two week period. Our first electional opportunity is going to be for uh, March 19th at around 10.27 a.m. And this is going to be an opportunity for a Saturn planetary talisman. So everybody uh, this time is going to have a Saturn planetary talisman opportunity. So, you know, hold on, North America, we're coming to it. But this one is a little bit different than the Australian version, uh, which tends to happen just because of the distance. At this time, as you can see, we have Saturn on the midheaven instead of on the ascendant like it was in the Australian version. And if we still have this trine to um, Saturn from the moon, the ruler of the first house in this case is Mercury here in Pisces, um, which obviously is not a great sign for Mercury to be in. But Mercury is not afflicted by another planet. It's not square or conjoined Saturn or Mars. It's not entered the combustion zone of the sun yet. It's conjoined here with Jupiter um, on the ninth house cusp, which I think is very nice. So even though Mercury isn't doing well by sign placement, it has a lot of other good kind of things associated with it to help kind of balance that out. And I don't typically super consider um, essential dignity for the ruler of the first house anyway, um, really more concerned with accidental positions than essential dignity as far as that's concerned. The moon at the same time is unafflicted by Mars or Saturn because she's applying to the trine of Saturn, um, isn't combust, is doing very well, placed in the fifth house, which is fine. Um, the only kind of thing to watch out for in this chart, which probably isn't actually going to be that big of a deal, is um, just how close the moon is to Venus. So the moon is at 12 degrees Libra in 31 minutes, and Venus is at 12 degrees Aquarius in 12 minutes. Um, so there's this like really close kind of separation happening between these two planets. And you want to make sure that, of course, the moon is applying to Saturn in a Saturn talisman. That's kind of the whole point. Um, so just something to be aware of, but I actually don't think it's going to be that much of an issue just because this is like an hour past. Um, and by that time, Saturn, like if you were going to wait an hour, then Saturn would have been back here. Um, so I don't think it would be super, I don't think it's super anything to worry about. I think the time to worry about it has kind of passed and the moon is pretty um, solidly applying to Saturn in the time frame that you would most want a Saturn talisman anyway. So just keep in mind, but that does mean that um, you're not going to be able to get this one on the Ascendant. So if you, you know, maybe weren't able to make the 1030 time and we're hoping there was a Saturn on the Ascendant talisman option available, there isn't. Um, not only because the day will change from Saturn's day, like it is now, but to Venus's day, but because the moon will probably actually be applying the trine to Mars instead of Saturn, which is not what you would want. Our second electional opportunity for um, Western Europe and Northern Africa is going to be on March 25th at around 2.41 a.m. Um, and this is going to be an opportunity for a 22nd Lunar Mansion talisman. The 22nd Lunar Mansion is one that is primarily focused on um, themes of escape and freedom. So um, leaving behind oppressive or restrictive structures, leaving behind oppressive or restrictive habits, leaving behind oppressive or restrictive insert thing here. Um, people, places, activities, expectations, um, whatever those are like that's a great way to, to think about it especially when coupled with the with the waning moon um the 22nd lunar mansion has very strong like get this thing off me kind of vibes to it 
So a super helpful talisman. I recommend it pretty often to people. Um, in this chart here, you have a choice, but let's let's back up before we talk about that. Right now we have the moon in the um, 22nd lunar mansion. And at this time she is applying to the sextile to Jupiter, right? No, no, mm -hmm. she's applying the square to the sun, better. Um, at this time she's applying the square to the sun um, in Aries. And I like this much better than the sextile with Jupiter, <laughs> I know, um, just because I like the sun in Aries. Um, this like, whoa, Ryan likes the aspects of the sun, what a shock. Um, I just like the aspect of the sun better for this, just because the sun has a lot of powers associated with like um, freedom and cleansing and you know, like casting off chains and things like that, which I think is very helpful, um, especially if you're gonna use this in like a, a health kind of context, the sun is a much better application because the sun represents the vital force um, and vitality and the power of life. So I think that's a much better connection, especially in that context. So in this chart, you actually have a little bit of a choice of how you want to do it. Um, you can either do the Capricorn rising, which gives you Saturn as the ruler of the first house. Uh, let me do it this way. So you can either do the Capricorn rising, which gives you, you know, Saturn as the ruler of the first house conjoined Venus in the second house, not yet afflicted by Mars, not having to worry about the sun's combustion yet. Or if you wanted, you could do it a little bit earlier um, and get late Sagittarius rising and late Sagittarius, let me do, you, or you could get late Sagittarius rising, which would point you to Jupiter and Pisces, um, also in the second house. And that's really just a personal choice. Um, if you prefer the Sagittarius rising because you like the Jupiter rulership and Pisces better, excellent, do that. Um, if you like the Capricorn rising because you want um, Saturn and Aquarius uh, with the Venus conjunction there, um, excellent, do that. They're both totally fine options to utilize. Um, I would recommend either one of them. Um, and I would just say, you know, whichever one of those planets you like better, maybe you have, you know, um, a planet around, like a natal planet around Jupiter right now, and you want to use the, the Sagittarius rising, that's fine. Um, you know, either one's fine. They would both be great. Just whatever, which, whichever one you prefer to use, whichever sign, planet, rulership, um, you like better, use that one. Good time, baby. Yes. Yes, try to hear. He's tying. See how you tie. Hi, Ty. So our third and our final electional opportunity for Western Europe and North Africa is going to be just for the next day, March 26th at around 3.30 in the morning. This chart's set for 3.38. Um, and this is going to be an opportunity for a 23rd Lunar Mansion talisman. The 23rd Lunar Mansion is one that is primarily associated with devouring. Um, so, you know, that's fun. Um, so it's definitely one that we utilize a lot in the waning moon. The basic idea of the 23rd Lunar Mansion is that it eats up something. Um, it eats up and digests something and just kind of like gets rid of it. So this can be very useful in situations that are, um, that need to be processed uh, is a lot of times the way I think about it, um, especially when it comes to like processing emotional things um, or just kind of like processing events, just sort of that like taking it in, uh, you know, sitting with it and letting yourself kind of deal with whatever it is, whether that's like processing stress, processing grief, processing trauma. Of course, this is probably a process that you would want to use in conjunction with like professional assistance in these areas, but you know, having a magical means of assistance can't hurt. The 23rd Lunar Mansion can also be used for health talismans. The basic idea is that the 23rd Lunar Mansion kind of swallows up the illness and processes it. Um, this can be useful for, you know, illness and pain in general, but because we're talking about, you know, because the, the, the obvious imagery of the mansion is, you know, the throat, um, it can be useful for diseases of the mouth, throat, um, even digestive concerns where the, you know, ability to digest or, you know, process things is being uh, inhibited by something. So kind of keep that in mind if these are situations that you, that, 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 that hit home to you, like if these are things that you've dealt with. Um, then the 23rd Lunar Mansion could be a really great way to help to assist with this in some way. 
taking a look at our election for this time, the moon is placed in the... Um, I don't really like the black that much. Uh, but taking a look at our election at this time, the moon is placed in the 23rd lunar mansion conjoined the ascendant. And at this time, she applies this helpful sextile to Jupiter in Pisces. Um, the ruler of the first house is Saturn here in Aquarius conjoined Venus. Um, unafflicted by Mars still, not yet worried about combustion of the sun. The ascendant degree itself is fine. Um, also being supported by the nice sextile of Jupiter. Um, so just all in all, I think this is a really nice talisman. Um, I think that's, usually when it comes to the 23rd lunar mansion, that's one of the more waning mansions that I really, really focus on the more benefic influence more than the malefic influence. Like it's totally fine if you prefer a malefic influence. Um, but when it comes to like my own suggestions, I tend to really recommend the benefics just because it's very easy. Um, I usually go to benefics all the time uh, when it comes to issues of like health and safety. And especially if you're going to use the 23rd Lunar Mansion for any sort of like health or safety or bodily protection um, or bodily care sort of um, result or goal, then I really think the utilization of a benefic is preferred in this instance. So those are all the electional opportunities that we have for Western Europe and North Africa. And now we're going to move into the North American continent and its elections before closing out. And North America has four elections. The first one is going to be on March 19th at just after 11 in the morning. This chart set for like 11.06. And this is going to be that opportunity for the Saturn planetary talisman. Um, as you can see here, Saturn is strong in its sign of domicile, um, can join the midheaven here. Um, while the moon is applying a very friendly trine from the sign of Pisces, uh, I'm sorry, from, no, from the sign of Libra, um, Saturn's exaltation. At the same time, the ruler of the first house is Mercury here in Pisces, conjoined Jupiter, um, and the uh, 11th house cusp. All in all, just a pretty standard planetary talisman, I think. Um, the placement of Mercury in Pisces isn't super big deal. I don't normally consider... Um, essential dignity of the ruler of the first house to be all that important much more concerned with like afflictions to it via accidental um, positions the ascendant degree itself is well placed not having to worry about afflictions from anybody else um, and the moon's got this really nice trine to saturn without having to worry about you know venus getting in the way like we had to kind of take into consideration for the western europe north africa charts um, this is already well past that nothing to really worry about and just another really good option for any sort of Saturn and Aquarius workings. I was surprised to find this one, um, just because I didn't expect to get another one until um, after the retrograde period ended, sometime in November. Um, so it's nice to get another one before that, just because you know our time with Saturn and Aquarius is really running out. Um, so for people who have yet to get one or kind of waiting to find a really good election, you know whatever that looks like for you, uh, just know that you know TikTok, I guess, but not the dancing TikTok, like the ominous TikTok, which I guess are kind of the same nowadays. Weird. Our second electoral opportunity for the North American continent is going to be on March 23rd at just after 12.30 at night. This is set for 39 minutes after midnight. And this is going to be an election for a 20th Lunar Mansion talisman. The 20th Lunar Mansion is one that is primarily associated with hunting, which today uh, we sort of conceptualize more as like um, goal achievement. The idea that you know we have this goal in mind, we have these things that we want, and we go out and we achieve them. We go out and we acquire them in much the same way that a hunter would acquire their prey or catch their prey. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't use the 20th Lunar Mansion for hunting if that's something that you like to do for sport, but you know a more sort of universal application would be the um, achievement of, of specific goals. Because we're working in a waning moon phase, we have to make sure that the goals that we are, the, the goals and intentions that we're putting into the 20th Lunar Mansion Talisman at this time are more waning moon oriented. So they need to be goals to lose something, goals to, to get rid of something, goals to, um, you know, let go of something. That needs to be what this is, not the, the efficacy of any sort of um, achievement type, of, not achievement, but any, type of like, any kind of like gain or accumulation type of 20th Lunar Mansion Talisman at this time is going to be very limited. It's going to be much more easy to put this kind of letting go energy into um, talismans for goals that are more about letting go and diminishing. So just kind of keep that in mind. Like if you have a goal to lose weight or quit smoking or, you know, um, clean the house or, you know, clean out a storage shed or things like that, this could be the time to do that. But like the goal to get a new job or something like that, that's not going to be very useful. Um, this talisman is not going to be very useful for that at this time. We'll want to wait to see that again when the mansion gets on the waxing side of the sun. So taking a look at our election, we have the moon in the 20th lunar mansion conjoined the ascendant. 
Um, and at this time, she's applying this sextile to Mars. So the Mars connection here as a malefic planet is very useful when it comes to talismans that are about getting rid of and letting go of things. Um, Mars is all about separating and cutting that cord that keeps you connected to something. So it could really be very useful in a talisman that's about quitting a bad habit. Um, it could be really useful in a talisman that's about moving beyond a bad relationship. Um, it could be really good in a talisman that's about letting about like letting go of the attachments around surrounding something that are inhibiting you from from doing that thing so kind of keep that in mind a lot of times we tend to want more benefic planets involved for situations that we want to be easier um to be less stressful to be less um antagonistic or aggressive or confrontational so just kind of depending on how you want to how you want to move it about because the application with mars here would actually be tend to be quite confrontational quite aggressive um so you might not want to use this one if you don't want to come across that way to the thing or person that you are trying to move away from but if you do want to come across that way then here you go then have i got a story for you our third electional opportunity for the North American continent is going to be for March 25th at around 6.30 in the morning. This chart is set for 6.39, and this is going to be an opportunity for a 22nd Lunar Mansion Talisman. The 22nd Lunar Mansion is good for many things, but the main theme of the Talisman that we can see is that it is used primarily for um, the ideas of escape and freedom. So the 22nd Lunar Mansion is very helpful for kind of like letting go, casting off the chains that bind you sort of thing. Um, and this can be, you know, all kinds of things. It can be people, it can be places, it can be kind of general situations. It can even be illness and pain. So something to keep in mind um, if you're kind of trying to think about how this talisman can be useful for you. If you feel like you're being held back by somebody, by something, um, whether that is a real threat or an imagined threat, like it's kind of in your head, like your own fears and anxieties kind of a thing. Um, or if you struggle with some kind of chronic condition that you want some relief from, um, the 22nd Lunar Mansion can help you accomplish any of those things. So taking a look at our election chart here, we have the moon placed in the 22nd Lunar Mansion. And as you can see, she's not exactly on the midheaven um, like I tend to prefer her being. And just a reminder that the moon can be anywhere in the 10th house or, the ascendant, or in the first house even to be able to make an effective Lunar Mansion talisman. She does not have to be right on the ascendant or the midheaven, but you know, I just like her there. That's where she's the most angular and the most powerful. Um, but just being a little bit further into those angular houses is also not a terrible thing. Um, but the main reason why I put the moon here was so that I could get the moon's really nice sextile to a very angular Jupiter as the ruler of the first house. Um, I really liked this symbolism here and was glad that I could be able to get it for at least one of the three locations um, that I normally uh, do these charts for. Um, so, of course, the moon uh, applying this nice sextile to this benefic Jupiter, which could be very helpful, probably more so, for the um, for the uh, uh, applications to for healing and health than some of the others, um, but can still be very useful for um, assuring safety on the other side of whatever sort of radical act that you choose to employ to help you find, um, to help you kind of get past whatever is holding you back. So our final election for North America and our final election for this video as a whole is going to take place on March 23rd, just after 6 in the morning, my time, um, which is uh, 6.02 is what this chart is set for, so I'll have to kind of update that depending on where you are in North America. And this is an opportunity for an Antares fixed star talisman. Antares is a star that is primarily associated with fortifying the constitution and increasing memory. So the idea of, you know, putting on your armor to make yourself stronger, less likely to be ill, less likely to be attacked. Um, it's a very good like personal defense star, um, sort of like your shield. Like It's very much like putting on your armor, uh, and that can be in many different contexts. It can be putting on like your immunity armor, helping your, like helping boost your moon system, helping boost kind of the Wei Qi. Um, it can be like the spiritual armor, helping to protect oneself from negative energies, from accumulating negative energies, kind of keeping it off your body, um, keeping it off of you and away from you. It can be putting on armor to kind of like ward off other people who might be trying to hurt you, whether like directly or indirectly. It's a very like self-protective kind of star. Just think of it like, you know, it's the heart of the scorpion and scorpions are like super armored creatures um, with so many different ways to defend themselves. That's kind of the, what the Antares is kind of bringing into it. So Antares has this very strong emphasis on defense. Um, and on arming oneself, on armoring oneself, um, both from the physical and health side of things where the constitution is increased, the immunity is bolstered to help protect the body from um, 
you know, invading microbes, essentially, um, from attacking viruses, those kinds of things. Um, while on the other side of it, it's the spiritual application, spiritual protection to keep, you know, negative energy, to keep bad, like evil spirits, kind of uh, malefic attachments, spiritual attachments off of you. Um, so Antares can be really useful for kind of the preventative health, um, both on the spiritual and the physical plane, um, but can also be very useful for healing, um, primarily from spiritual illnesses. So kind of something to keep in mind with that. So those are going to be kind of your two main applications of the star Antares, either for physical protection or for spiritual protection um, and warding and defense. But taking a look at our election chart, um, we have the moon conjoin the star Antares on the midheaven here. And at this time, she's applying the sextile to Mars. Uh, Antares is, of course, a star that is of the nature of Mars. So this is an application that we definitely want. At the same time, um, the planet Jupiter rules the first house from the first house, is strong in Pisces. Um, is unafflicted by Mars or Saturn, is leaving combustion of the sun behind, like making its appearance for many parts of the world around this time. Um, and the application to Mars in the 12th house probably better aligns this particular Mars election to be for the spiritual defense side rather than the physical health side of things, just because the 12th house is the house of bad spirit and connecting to, you know, the martial planet, the, the like martial defending planet, um, in the 12th house brings in this theme of, you know, attacking 12th house things, attacking spiritual, uh, attacking bad spirits, attacking um, malefic attachments. Um, so this is probably, you know, of the two paths that Antares Talismans normally take, this selection is probably more, uh, more fits the application of it in the spiritual defense um, sort of path rather than the physical one. But alrighty, those were all of the electional opportunities that I had to share with you all for this two-week period. Hopefully there is some talismanic opportunity for your location that you are excited about being able to use. Please make sure to check out the website, which has, of course, more information about astrology generally and astrological magic. And you can support this series and other projects by booking a consultation or subscribing to the Patreon, which gives you access to a whole bunch of other nice goodies. But everybody take care, and I will see everyone again for our Aries New Moon elections.